everybody, welcome to the last lesson of this quadratics unit. The last lesson is going to be applications or word problems. So there are a couple of handouts for this. Um, let go with it. So I'm just going to show you those. Where are we here? Unit four. Um, there's an applications graphs given handout and then an applications info given. Um, they just have two problems on them each. I just wanted to show you there were two different ones um, so that you can see um, that they're a little different. What I'm going to do is the first question on each of these I'm going to do in this presentation and then the second question you can try them on your own but I'm also going to upload the solutions to those so you can take a look to check that you're doing them right. Okay so let's go back to the lesson here. Okay so our learning goal here is to be able to solve word problems involving quadratic equations. Um, to D's, you will be going on and doing additional quadratic stuff to finish out the year, um, while to P's, you will be doing geometry stuff. So this is the last, last lesson of this quadratic unit. Um, next week will just be a review and a final assignment for the unit, and then we'll move on to the last unit of the year. So... We're going to have two types of questions in this unit. Um, one is if you're given a graph. And so we're going to do an example like that right now. So let's say we have Justin. He's standing on a cliff and the cliff is 15, 16 feet high. Sorry. So it starts at zero dist horizontal distance. So we have horizontal distance on the x axis and vertical height on the y-axis. So we're just going to put the cliff at zero horizontal distance just because it's easier and he's starting at a height of 16 feet. At, from 16 feet he throws a sto stone in the air and then it follows this path and lands on the ground here. So now we're going to go through a bunch of questions you could be asked about this type of situation and show you how to answer them. So the first question is state the vertex and what does it represent in this situation? Well, if you remember, the vertex is the very top of a graph or the very bottom if it's going the other way. And this is a point. So remember, you're going to find your x value first, which is 3, and then your y value. Notice how it's halfway between 24 and 26, so it'll be 25. So then the vertex, you will write it as a point with your x value first, 3, and then your y value second. So 3 and 25. What does this represent? Well, this is the highest part point of the stone. So Justin throws the stone, it goes up, and then gravity brings it back down. So this is the highest point of the stone, and it occurs when the stone is three meters away from the cliff and the stone is 25 meters high from the ground level here. Okay, second question. What's the y-intercept and what does it represent? Well, the y-intercept is where the graph goes through the y-axis. Again, this can be represented as a point. Um, so the x value of this point is 0 and y value is 16. So the y-intercept is 0, 16. And what does this represent? Well, this is the starting point of the stone. Or you could say this is where Justin throws the stone from. Okay. Next question. State the 0 or x-intercept. What does it represent? So... We can see one of the zeros, um, and the zero is where it goes through the x-axis. Again, it's going to be a point. Your x-value is 8, and your y-value is 0, because it's along the x-axis. And what does it represent? Well, if you follow this path, 
the rock goes up, comes down, and then hits the ground. So that's where it hits the ground or where it lands or the ending point of the stone. So you can say that in a variety of ways. Okay, what's next? D just wants us to add the axis of symmetry. So remember the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes right through the vertex. So it's going to be a vertical line along x equals 3. So there's our axis of symmetry there. The next question wants us to use the axis of symmetry to find the other zero. Because notice, if we fit this curve with a parabola, the parabola would continue down to here and give us another zero, right? or x-intercept, but it's not shown on the graph. So one way you can use it is remembering that parabolas are symmetrical. So if our 1, 0 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away from the axis of symmetry, our other 0 has to have the same distance away. So 1, 2, 3, four, five. So that means the other unit, or sorry, the other zero will be five units to the left of the axis of symmetry, which gives us the point negative two and zero. And A of E just means axis of symmetry. I don't know why I put A of E. Let me change that. That's a different type of math. Okay. Let me just present that again and then go do that. Okay, so the next question is, determine the equation of the graph in the form y equals negative one x minus x times x minus t. Now, this is the factored form of our parabola, remember? And remember our s and t are just our x-intercepts. So what we're, and it's telling us negative one here because the graph is the graph is facing down. It's a downward facing parabola. Um, so that means we have a negative number here. Okay, so we're gonna put in our two zeros. Remember our zeros were eight and negative two. So keep your negative one there. X minus negative two times X minus eight. And now I'm just gonna clean this up. If you're subtracting a negative number, that's the same as adding it. So here's our equation. So y equals negative x plus two times x minus eight. I just got rid of the one because you don't need to have it there. If you have it there, I wouldn't mark it wrong, but this is a, a more correct way to state that equation. The next question is determine the equation of the graph in standard form by expanding your equation from part f. Okay, so our equation was this, and now remember we're gonna multiply it using FOIL, using your box method, using whichever method you would like. Um, if we FOIL it, you could think of, I multiply my two first terms, x squared, multiply my outer terms, and I totally didn't do this in the right order, but outer terms would be negative 8x, um, inner terms will be 2x, and then uh, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Now I'm going to clean this up because I can collect these terms together. So x squared minus 6x minus 16, and because we have this negative sign out here, we can distribute it to each of these terms inside the brackets which just means you need to switch the sign of all of them. So the final equations is y equals negative x squared plus 6x plus 16. And hey, that's good that this 16 is the same as our y-intercept, because remember, when we have an equation in this form, the c value tells us our, our y-intercept. Sorry. Okay. So that's an example of how to do an application's questions when you're given a graph. So you can go ahead and try question number two on the graphs given handout and then check my solution. And what I'm going to do next is do an example if you're told information. 
and then have to have to make a graph. So this is for the second handout. So here's this example. A ball is thrown from five meters, reaches a maximum height of nine meters after two seconds and lands after five seconds. So the first question is to get us to sketch a graph and it wants us to include the axis of symmetry. So I've made up a graph here. Um, we're working with height and that's gonna be on the y-axis and it goes up to nine. So I thought I would go up to 10 just to make it nice and even. And then on the y, or so on the x-axis, instead of distance, we have time. And it's telling us after two seconds, after five seconds. So I did it up to six seconds, just so we have a nice little buffer. So now we're gonna take each of these points and put them on here and then try to draw a curve. So it starts at five meters. So anytime you see a question with time and it's starting, that means the time is zero at that point. So at zero seconds, the ball is at five meters. So we're gonna put a point here. The next point we're given is it's a nine meters after two seconds. So two seconds is here and nine meters. So we're gonna put another point there. And then after five seconds, it says it lands. Well, remember, if this is the height, if it's on the ground, that means the height is zero. So you're going to put the dot here at five seconds and zero height. So there it is. Now I drew like a really terrible line. So you hopefully you can do better. It's hard to do this with a mouse. But anyway, it looks somewhat like a parabola. Um, and don't forget to include the axis of symmetry. Well, Remember, the maximum or minimum value is always the center of a parabola or a halfway point. So we can put the axis of symmetry going directly through that point, And it's a vertical line going through x equals 2. OK, let's see what else we need to do for this. We have the, the graph, which will help us answer other questions. So second is fill in the table. Okay, so we need to figure out what the y-intercept is. Remember that is where it goes to the y-axis. So that's gonna be zero and five. What the vertex is, that's the maximum or minimum value. So x is gonna be two and y is gonna be nine. And I'm just gonna, I'll put the answers up after I do all this. The zero, is um or goes through the x axis is five and zero and then the other zero will remember that the other zero will be symmetrical across the y or across the axis of symmetry so see how this zero is one two three to the right from the axis of symmetry so to get the other zero we have to go three to the left so that would be one, zero, and negative one. So our other zero will be at um, negative one and zero. So there's our solutions there. Um, if you need to go back, rewind me to go through the explanation so that you can see what the answers are there. Okay, and now what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna find the equation again. So de determine the equation um, in factored form using our two zeros. So remember our two zeros, if we go back, our two zeros are five and zero and negative one and zero. So we're gonna take five and negative one and put them in for S and T. It does not matter which one you put in for which. Again, it has a negative one because the parabola is opening down. If it was opening up, it would have a positive one here. Okay, so I put negative one in for S and then five in for T. Again, we have a minus, subtract, again, we, have, we are subtracting a negative number. So that's the same as adding a number. So there's our equation right there. Lovely. Okay, the next question, using your equation, what is the height of the ball at one second and three seconds? <coughs> now, 
Now, there's a reason why I'm asking you here to use your equation. Because look at my drawing. If I have the height of the ball at one second, at one second, it's about eight. And at three seconds, it's at about seven. But look how wonky my graph is. I did not do this very well. So the best thing to do is when you're finding a height at a certain time is to substitute in the time um, and find the, the height. So our equation, remember if we go back, oops, is negative x plus one times x minus five. Well, at one second, we're going to put in our x value is 1. So our x has become 1. Um, so 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And I just kept this negative um, in the front here. And then you get negative 2 times negative 4 is 8 meters. And then I'll, at three seconds, now we're going to replace our x values with three instead of one. Uh, so three plus one is four, and three minus five is negative two. And don't forget to carry this negative as well. So now we have negative four times negative two, which is eight meters. Now that makes sense because they are both one second away from the maximum time sorry, where the ball reaches a maximum and what time that happens at, you would think they would have the same height because remember, parabolas are supposed to be symmetrical. So I guess this is the next question too. What did you notice about our answers? Well, they are the same. And that makes sense because they are equal, they are an equal horizontal distance from the axis of symmetry. So just like how we use that idea of symmetry to find the other zeros, you can think that if it's one second away on each side, they should have the same height. And same with at two seconds away, etc. Okay, so that's it for that example. Those are a little shorter. So you can go ahead and try the second one on the information given handout. Once you have done those questions, check out the solutions that I've posted on Brightspace. And if you're feeling comfortable with those, you can go ahead and try the 4.8 quiz. Okay, that's it for today. And we'll see you next week with a review and a unit assignment. Okay, bye-bye.